studies. Or another thing that I'll do is I'll show you some anesthetics and I'll be like, hey, here are some like pictures of the Moonstone key and here's some women whose outfits represent that. But today I wanna to talk about the Moonstone essence because in my system, kind of like just looking at these pictures and seeing them together doesn't really make sense without understanding the essence. And it's really important to understand that the way that you are, the essence, we're gonna talk about that, is a lot deeper than the differences in this like aesthetic or the visual style. Even if people can have quite different outfits, there is very much like this underlying theme. And especially what unites them is their underlying approach to style. So as a quick example of this, right, we could have these two types of outfits and I feel like these outfits are quite different, right? The woman on the left, she's wearing this very refined, classy kind of old money, quiet luxury, whatever you want to call it, right? It's very tailored, beige, very coordinated. Whereas the woman on the right is wearing something that's more casual, relaxed, but also like fun and creative, right? She has a bit of distressing on the jeans. She has this really fun bag. She has the pink shoes. There's like a lot more fun going on, I guess. But to me, even though these outfits are quite different, I feel like they could easily be worn by a person with this right down Moonstone essence because they also have a lot of things in common, right? Even though there are expressive visual themes in the outfit, there is kind of a sense of ease. It's the outfits are more on the understated side. And I feel like the same style logic can be used to arrive to both of these looks. So that's why I also often do these types of style streams, right? Where I'll show you a bunch of different aesthetics. So on the left, that's from my magical ethereal stream. I feel like it's a bit of like magical ethereal with the mushrooms. Second left is from my sensual stream. Here's from my colorful stream. And on the right, I have the edgy, uh, dark, moody outfit, right? So these are all outfits which are representations of kind of different aesthetics. And yet, once again, the thing that is really uniting them and bringing them together is that they could all be worn by the person that relates to the Moonstone style key that has the right down essence. So that's what I want to talk about, like what is this underlying story? What is the Moonstone essence? For me, essence is the overall experience, the overall impression of you as a person. It the, the reason I say experience and impression is because I think it's something about your inner experience of yourself, the way that you experience yourself to be, but it is also about the way that people receive and perceive you. And it's this kind of like delicate dance of both things. Essence to me is not really about your personality because you could, for example, be really generous as a person, or you could be very kind of self-focused, goal-oriented, and but that's a personality difference, but you would still have, can have this like overall feel, the vibe of the write down Moonstone Keep. And one thing I wanna say is that I do think that this aspect of the style system, because it's foundational to the style key, the idea that there is this essence, I think that in some ways this idea can be frustrating because unlike a body system or a color system or even essence systems based on your facial features, there isn't any really clear checklist. There is no instrument that you can use to measure essence except using a regular that we'll talk about that. It's not really clear how you would measure it and it can really feel like, oh, this concept is so vague, it is so poetic, it is kind of mystical, it's kind of abstract, and for some people that can feel really, really frustrating. And what I wanna say is, you know, of course that's just always going to be the case, but I think what makes Essence so captivating to me and the reason that I have built my style system around it and the reason I love working with it is because even though it is mystical and poetic, it's also very tangible. I do think that we really receive people in different ways, that different people create a different energetic impression on us. And I think that people's inner energetic experience of themselves are different in this systematic way. And most importantly, I do think that there is really a strength in finding a personal style that is coherent with your essence. I call that style that makes sense for who you are. And that is the goal of the style key, right? Is to help you really align what you're doing visually with the way that you are as a person. That's the essence. 
And as I said, even though it can be a bit hard to measure, oh, like how, you know, what is the person's essence? Like, what can we really use as an indicator of that? We can very tangibly feel and perceive when the person's kind of energy vibe being is really aligned with the way that they are presenting themselves and how they are feeling in their clothes. So for example, I guess you could say that there is some checklist of traits that make me have a very like extravagant essence and my general love of things that are like very over the top. I am very visually expressive with my body language and my facial features and I just I take up a lot of space and I talk a lot and I'm, I'm very like I have a lot of like output so in a lot of ways yeah I guess I'm like a very extra person I think that at the same time like if you're just looking at like a face photo of me be like I don't know how you would possibly receive that but my goal for example my style is to always give myself the space and permission to be as extra as I want to be by using a very extravagant styling so it's like well not only do I have like a kind of a silky jacket but there's like two patterns going on and they're like different and it's velvet and I have like lace on the tank top and my eye makeup matches the outfit and there's like this big big jewelry but not only that there's like a necklace right so that's just my way for example of really cohering my essence with my appearance which is that I really like things to be very intense and over the top and so I want my visual presentation to also be that way and so for you in order to find your unique flavor of the right down the moonstone style key you want to first understand what is this general principle like what is the overall point of the write down essence because understanding kind of that big big box which holds so many very different people helps you eventually find your own flavor of it and that's what i wanted to just come in and talk about today's to give you this understanding of the write down essence so you can understand what it means as i said beyond um what it means beyond just okay here are these visual examples and here are the clothes you should wear right or even beyond what i call the style logic i want you to understand why is that the style logic that makes sense for the way that you are as a person and for the way that you want to be presenting yourself so as you know in my system right there is the four quadrants and my beautiful gemstones they refer to one of the quadrants so the moonstone style key is in the write down quadrant so the write down essence right is a combination of the right essence and the down essence so i'll talk a little bit about that so for me right energy right it is expressive it's giving out it's shining sharing it's showing its connection with the outer world it's influencing it's not any one of these specific things. It's not all of these things. This is just me trying to put words on it, just like I have also put words on it in my right keywords. And you can watch my video about that, um, or you can read about it on my website or my keyword guide, right? These radiant, expressive, luminous essence, etc. right? So the right essence to me, giving, expressing, connecting right and so in concrete terms right so if since you have this right essence in concrete terms for you what that means is that you want to belong visually you want to fit in right with the connection of the outer world you want also your style to make sense you want to feel like put together one of the favorite moonstone things it kind of translates into this desire to find your place and to positively be received by others because you want to express into the world right so it's really important for you to feel like that's going to work because you you know so you are like in place for where you're at and again i just want to say if you're listening to me talk about this and you're like okay this sounds like kind of interesting but i'm not sure about this like uh, <laughs> just listen and then marinate a bit and see how you feel you don't need to like agree or disagree right away so that for me is the right essence and what the right essence then connects with is a gift and a challenge. So your gift for the Moonstone style key for the right essence in general is being able to attune to the style world around you, right? You are really good at picking up on expectations, norms, trends, and also ideas. So I mean, you are you are really good at picking up on expectations. So for example, like you're really good, you just adept at observing what are people around you doing and wearing like what is normal for where you live the type of job you have the type of people you spend time with like the age group that you belong to the um just social group any other indicator like you're really good at kind of analyzing and perceiving what the uniform is 
whether you do that in a very logical structured <laughs> words way or it's just like a feeling vibes way but it's not only that you're good at picking up on expectations norms and trends you're also really good at picking up on ideas right so just like you look you can see a character you can see a photo shoot you can see an influencer you can see a person in the street you can see a painting you can see a landscape you can see right something inside your home you can see a piece of art like there's so many things and you look at that thing and it kind of naturally can like spark a lot of interest and you're like you're like oh i love looking at this and this really gives you a lot of ideas for things that you could potentially wear thank you for saying hi everybody i love that you're here this is like super short notice sorry i wasn't checking the comments thank you for saying hi i always feel so happy um so that's the gift right is this attunement and then the challenge like with anything the attunement goes too far right so what happens is because you're really attuned to what's normal what's expected what's done you can easily really get worried about judgment you can get caught in that comparison to other people or you go too far into this like taking inspiration realm and you end up basically copying without enjoying, right? I see this, I do it, I don't really like it, but I'm just implementing the things I see around me kind of on autopilot. So that's the right essence that has to do with your ability to receive the things and also the wanting to align yourself with the things that you see as a way of like belonging, contributing and making sense. So that's the right piece, right? And then you also have the down essence. So down in my system, I call it a low energetic barrier. Again, like there is no way to measure this, but for me, it is about having a presence and an overall like you at your comfortable, relaxed, happy, beautiful style self, have a vibe that's like, it's you're quite sensitive and delicate, I would say, to clothes and to other things you're relatively like open you're maybe like inviting or approachable even if you're not like super friendly <laughs> there's just something about you that feels i would say like a lot of times people say it's like very real the kind of the annoying part is sometimes people feel like they really know you even if they don't know you or they feel kind of like entitled to you right because there's this like approachability in a way so the down essence again be poetic what concretely what it means in the style terms is because you at your best have this kind of like easy connection with the world you want to avoid doing like too much with your style stuff and that's one of your big style concerns is the idea that you would do too much right and the reason you don't like doing too much is because you will feel like you're in a costume you will feel like you're getting too much attention, maybe attention you don't like, which is like too much sensory input, right? So you might be looking at Rita here, looking so cute in my pretty outfit, and just think like, oh, I love that. But I would just not wear that, especially not wear that to talk, like, you know, <laughs> to talk on camera for half an hour. That's just like way too much. Maybe I would wear that for a special event, right? And the reason you're thinking that isn't because you are dissing me. The reason you're thinking that is because for you, having all these like thingamabobs, all this stuff, a lot of the time it just creates a lot of internal input, sensory input, psychological input, just like all types of input just feels like, whoa, like, <laughs> like relax. <laughs> and again, it has nothing to do with like your love or dislove of fancy complex outfits. And it doesn't mean you never want to wear complex things, but it does translate into a desire to present yourself in an expressive way without going overboard. That's kind of my catchphrase. So you see where we're going with this, right? With the down essence, again, because you have the vibe, it gives you a gift and a challenge in terms of your style. So the gift is that you do have this ability to create an amazing like impression of authenticity, right? That you like just pulling it off. It feels so perfectly you. It's effortless, right? <laughs> Even if it was not at all effortless for you to design or find that outfit, just, oh, it just feels fresh feeling of freedom, right? Like you you decide comfortable with yourself. That's like a really big gift you have when you actually wear the stuff that really suits you. You can like just shine and glow your personal energy with so much ease. And the other gift is you have this amazing ability to have this like inner knowing of what works for you, right? Because you are measuring the style in the down essence,
Okay. I think I brought myself back. I think I brought myself back. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> Classic like Rita technology fail. Just me trying to pause the screen sharing and instead I like stop the stream. Okay. I got, I like, I literally started sweating. I was like, anyway, you see where I'm going with this, right? So because you have this ability of like the inner knowing of what works for you, that's guided by your sense of like exactly what is too much and what is enough for you and what you want. The challenge for you is not being able to like trust this and not being able to listen to this, right? So your challenge is like getting caught in overly minimal and quiet looks, right? Like you think like, oh, I'm so sensitive or like the sensitivity is real, but then the sensitivity kind of creeps up on you and you end up like stifling yourself because you're like, oh, I can't wear this type of thing. I can only wear like really basic stuff. Like I could never wear big earrings. And if you tell yourself that for like a year, yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable the first few times you wear big earrings for sure, right? So that's definitely a challenge for you is getting caught in that like overly minimal and quiet thing because of the delicate essence. But also a challenge in general is like doubting that inner knowing. And I'm always going to talk about the inner knowing for, I mean, it's for everybody. Okay, right, the inner knowing. But I mean, especially for you with the down essence, the inner knowing is so important because what is enough depends on you. What is a good outfit really depends primarily on how it makes you feel. Primarily your beauty comes out like the better you feel about the outfit, the better people like receive and perceive you and they think you're so beautiful and so magnetic and so glowing and so like unstoppable when you're feeling, when you're really vibing, enjoying and feeling good. So your challenge there is to really take charge of that and be like, yeah, what is really good is what I feel really good in. And that's my thing. So now I wanna put this all together for you with my favorite analogy, which is the protagonist analogy. Okay, so how are we gonna put this together? So you understand so far that your essence firstly is very like attuned to the external world. You wanna share, you wanna belong, you're like seeking harmony, you're seeking making sense, you're seeking belonging. But at the same time, even though you're definitely like a participant in the social expectations, norms, trends, inspirations, what you're trying to do is find that perfect feeling for yourself. You are looking for your happy place where it's not too much and not too little, where it feels like you, where it's not just copying, but it's really doing something that speaks to you. And that's kind of the challenge of the personal style for you, right? And so that's why the Moonstone Quadrant are so beautiful, so beautiful and so dynamic because you're at this like your gorgeous intersection of like taking in all of these external ideas, visions, inspirations, and then really funneling, translating them into like, what do I want? Like, how would I do this? What feels really, really good for me? And you're really focusing on yourself as a person. So my favorite analogy is the protagonist. I said it's called her the main character. I feel like it's been a bit tainted by TikTok in recent year, but I'm sticking with it because it's very good. So the analogy is the protagonist, right? And I do think this is very true for Moonstone. I'm not saying everybody loves you, but I do think there's something about the Moonstone write down essence that does, <sighs> people are like very willing to really like root for you and be favorably disposed to you. Again, without knowing you or you having really given them reasons and maybe actually you're like a really spicy cookie and they shouldn't think they know anything about you. But it's kind of like the protagonist. You start reading the book. You're like, this is the main character. I'm invested. I want everything to go good for this person. Why? Because they're the main character. Like, that's just how it is, right? And then the protagonist, their story, right? The reason we are so interested in watching movies or reading books or whatever is because we want to follow how does this person encounter the world in their own way, right? That's you, uh, right? That's you, you are encountering the style world by making your own way through it. And what is really fun for you and fun for us to perceive about you, what we wanna see is like, how do you navigate that complex external world? How do you as an individual do it, right? Captivating protagonists. And the reason I find this analogy really empowering, and the reason I really love it, is because a captivating protagonist is not a little misperfect. Nobody really wants to watch a book or read a movie about a person who 
knows exactly what to do and does it exactly right every single time. Because what we're really interested in with characters, people, is the development, like the arc. We want to see them meeting challenges. We want to see them rising to challenges. We want to see them evolving, right? You love to see how does it go, right? And so for you, I think thinking about this protagonist and thinking about yourself as a person who's like moving through the world of style, of all inspirations, ideas, and finding your own way through it in this like very real, messy, human way, this is so beautiful. And the idea, I'm not, you know, of course some characters are more lovable than others. And if you want people to love your style and you want them to love the way you look and you want them to love you in general, like that's your human right. I'm not saying like you should not care at all what people think. What I'm trying to say is that for you, the perfection and this feeling like you have already solved it and you already have all the answers and you know exactly what to wear and it looks like literally perfect on you and you've decided the aesthetic and it's going to be your aesthetic forever. This isn't really what makes your style story compelling. So that's it. You're the, you're the protagonist. You're the person who is at the center where it's very compelling for you to think about how are you uniquely moving through your style world? What is your journey and how are you moving through it? And I find this description, this analogy to be really helpful. Here, I wrote it up so I wouldn't forget. First of all, I think it really does help you focus on the process and on exploration. I talk a lot about exploration. That's my energetic medicine for the Moonstone South Cave because I think that's, oh, that's like infinite rewards for you if you just like master the process. It, the the protagonist analogy shifts focus, right? You're like, damn, I'm really having a hard time with my style right now. Like, oh my God, style is really on, to on top right now. The, you know, there's ups and downs, but either way, it's always about the process and not in the root also releasing the focus on the answer, <laughs> releasing the focus on pleasing others, right? You are the main person in the story. It, I think like a big thing uh, is that for the Moonstone, as I said, it's like comparison to others, which just comes as a natural consequence of your attunement to the external world and what people are doing around you. But you can get caught up in this comparison to others. And then in a way, it's almost like you're making your style story about them, right? Well, my colleague at work, she complimented me twice when I wore this sweater. And when I wore my funny earrings, she didn't say anything. So I guess I shouldn't wear the lemon earrings to work because they're not professional or whatever, right? Then it's suddenly a your style story is suddenly about them, like they're the main character, they're in charge of what, like that doesn't make any sense to me. So I think thinking about yourself as the protagonist is a really helpful way of just reminding yourself that like you are the person the style story is about. And for you, that's so healing because you have this tendency to so easily slide into making it about other people and how you're comparing or whether or not you're fulfilling their expectations, right? So because that's like a very natural tendency and challenge for you, it's helpful to like counterbalance by thinking instead like, what do I want? And like, what makes me happy? And the end point of all this is like cultivating trust, cultivating confidence, cultivating joy. So trust in the idea that like, I know what is around me, like I'm good at perceiving it. I know what I need. I'm good at filtering all of that through into me. I am the, and the confidence comes from where you're like, I like this outfit, so it is good. Like I feel good in the outfit and I can trust that because I feel good in this outfit, this is a successful outfit for me, right? Like that's the style logic. I wanted to wear the outfit to the meeting to feel confident and I felt really confident, like really, success right that's and that's the confidence of being like oh i knew it was good and then also cultivating joy which is just like style can feel so much more fun easy like playful and joyful in the heart and everywhere when you shift the focus to yourself as the person on the journey the exploration of style who is allowed to have some outfits that are imperfect or even bad many outfits that are bad because it doesn't take away anything from your beauty the value of you as a person or as a style person so that is our discourse on the write down moonstone essence i am going to mention two things 
First of all, I have recorded my new Moonstone audio course. It is like a gathering of my most helpful Moonstone perspectives in a concise audio format. I linked it below. And if you get the course before, I think next Monday, we're also gonna have a free like Moonstone Q&A hangout session. It can be really fun. That's one thing I wanna mention. The other thing is because April started, have more bookings for my gentle guidance. I don't think I booked that below, but if you're like, I think this is me, like, what do I do? How do I work with this information? I, I like, I would love to help you. So those are two ways that you can work with me. And then I also have put together Moonstone playlist with stuff. So you can also check that out. So I have a lot of things for you. If you're like resonating with this, I want you to be able to take that resonance and like move forward and find a way to implement it to improve the style time. Okay, I want to check some comments. Sniff the dust says my friend is definitely right down. I have colors I call her colors. She always excuses herself for being so quiet and unnoticeable. This is like so typical with the writer Moonstone people, especially um, because of course some people in this quadrant, they have quite an expressive style, right? But a lot of people, they feel like their style is like so bland and it's like in comparison to what? Again, it's like in comparison to like, oh, this mystical imaginary Pinterest person I saw who, you know, has nothing in common with me. And Alice says, Radio, really, I make up is gorgeous. Thank you. You know, I, it's like I'm, I'm doing a whole like <laughs> theme. Christina says, All of this resonates. I've been told I'm really warm and approachable. I have strangers in cities ask me to take their photos or ask for directions. You know, that's like a common, that's a quite common thing. And I sometimes like I have clients with the outbus and they're like, This happens to me too. But I definitely feel like that is a big common thread, right? Where people for some reason like expect you to be approachable. I think that's like a, a big thing. It's not even so much on like whether people, like, you are that or not. It's like people like identify you as the person they expect to be approachable. And it's like, why? What is the, what's the secret like signal you're sending out? <laughs> like what are they, why are they perceiving? Oh, and Natalie says, you're not only the protagonist, you're the author too. That's beautiful. Yeah, that I love that, definitely. Um, Joanna says it's very healing. I'm constantly comparing and looking at other people's style. I need to concentrate to be able to focus just on me. Yeah, and I think like the cool thing about taking the style key perspective on this is to think that like this ability of yours, as I said, to really look at what other people are doing and be aware of it, it's a gift. It's that's like your attunement. It's not a problem. But the thing is like, so we don't need to stop, we don't need to make it go away it's kind of like about shifting focus to like how do we counterbalance it right and how do you remember that your style work your style process as a person that your style goal doesn't stop with that oh i've observed and perceived but rather it stops with the like okay i've observed i've perceived some patterns i've noticed red is trending when i wear red like i feel really cool i'm gonna get a red thing I want to make sure that red thing feels like me and not like some, you know, Instagram, a uh, cool girl, like, oh, I have the red sweater, like perfect. You know, so you like really the work is about translating that impression you get from other people into what's going to serve you as an individual person. And the same with like thinking like, okay, yeah, it's really cool if I go to work and I wear this outfit and my colleague compliments me, like what a rush. But realistically, more important to me makes more of an impact for me on my day, on how I feel, if I am feeling really beautiful. You know, and of course, we want to find that sweater that gets us compliments and we feel beautiful. But I do like with the Moonstone, I always encourage you to focus on like, okay, how am I feeling in this, you know, and learning to receive that self approval that self-appreciation, just like those positive things from yourself, you know, so you're not only able to get the positive feedback from other people, but like truly learning to give yourself that feeling like, yes, I did it, you know, I wanted to wear a really cute, fun brunch outfit to make brunch really fun, and I did it, and all my friends were like, oh, they were like wearing sweatpants, whatever, but I really had so much fun, and I, I like that felt great to me, right? So learning how to really 
give that to yourself. That's definitely something I infinitely talk about is that we, we all have to do. I'm thinking Natalie. Okay. And China says, rather than thinking about looking bland as moonstones, we could look at it as refined. Yeah, for sure. I feel like, I don't know. Like, I, I really, I, it's hard for me because like I, as a person have a lot of like envy. Like I really just like love the right down styling so much. I mean, I don't want to like all of you are my favorite. All the quadrants, all the style keys are my favorite. But I feel like for me personally, that's kind of like the quadrant I'm like very drawn to aesthetically. So it's so hard for me to like sometimes emphasize with this like, oh, when you guys don't think it's like cool enough. I'm like, but <laughs> like, what? but I understand like logically. Yeah, I just... There's a lot of like insecurity, but I think the insecurity, I guess I wanna just say one more time, I think the insecurity does not come from the fact that your clothes actually are like underwhelming or they're like not interesting enough. What it comes from is this idea that like we are looking for ways to criticize ourselves, especially with style. It's like just a huge magnet for self-criticism for all people. It's like a big tool for us to be down on ourselves. And I can feel like an easy way to criticize, like, this is like not interesting enough, blah, blah. as if like visual complexity is like a moral good, right? Because that's not necessarily true. And also, even if you, if you perceive the visual complexity for you or intensity is like a desirable trait, then there's definitely ways for you to have more of that in your wardrobe, right? doing it in your own way so it's really about kind of figuring out like well how much do you want from day to day but like you know so you have options in your closet how much do you want so you and then when you have the enough that you want how can you feel good about it and be like but this is perfect for me like yeah, I love that Rita has three colors of eyeshadow on what I that's really pretty um and I don't want to wear eyeshadow on a regular Tuesday. Thank you. You know, that is so you're able just to have that comparison with others in a neutral way because it comes from a place of you knowing what feels good for you rather than coming from a place of like, well, I, I could never do that. So like, and that's the good thing. So that's, um, I'm not doing good. Okay. <sighs> My beautiful flowers. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. I know a lot of people are gonna watch the recording. I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you found helpful or interesting. Um, oh, last question. Sorry, Natalie. Self-focus is something both the Moonstone and the Ruby really needs to focus on. It's about like your, do you think Ruby is more naturally self-focused because you have the inner wor world as the starting point? But there's like focus on like self-approval and how to really, use the feeling of like, I really got what I wanted out of this outfit as a really like the key metric, if you want, for like the success of an outfit. That's like the part of the style logic. And I feel like it is more challenging Moonstone Ruby. So that's why I really emphasize it because I feel like that it's like really rewarding for you, but it's not always easy, right? So the Ruby can also often come up with other reasons why they should look different or wear something else, even though that thing really makes them happy. So it's all about like bringing that focus back and being like, I'm allowed to like things. And when I like things, that's what good style is for me. Okay, so beautiful flowers. Yes, goodbye. Let me know if you have any questions. If you want any further discussion on Moonstone, anything else, I love to hear it. And thank you for being here. Bye.